We welcome you to the worship of God on this fifth Sunday of the Easter season. Today we have the privilege of sharing in the Lord's Supper. So I invite you to bring to your worship center this morning a piece of bread or cracker, a, a cup of juice or water that you might partake in Holy Communion with us later in the service. This day we are drawn by something deep inside, a thirst for living water. We are looking for truth that anchors us amidst competing voices. We are searching for life that sparkles with joy and glows with warmth. We have come to find our way to Christ, to community, and to love. Let us pray. Holy Vine, we come to abide in your presence and to be nourished by your love. Connect us anew to the energy of your compassion and grace. Fill us afresh with the bread of life and the wine of forgiveness. Amen. Vine, you are the branch, do not forsake me. Come and reside with me, and I'll show you my glory. Abide in me, I am the branch. Of life with me, you won't go hungry. I am the way, I am the 
truth receive my mercy Abide in me Stay I hold the middle I am the door Come enter into Peaceful meadows Abide in me Stay Good morning. I have a question for you. Does any of, do any of you like fruit? You know, I wish I could see your hands because I imagine many of you are raising your hands. I love fruit. In fact, fruit is one of my favorite foods. I love sweet red cherries and crisp apples. I love juicy oranges and tangerines, but one of my favorite fruits is grapes. You know, we are so lucky living here in Sonoma County because we have grapes that grow all around us. I imagine many of you have seen some of the vineyards that we have nearby, and you've seen how grapes grow. I wish that I could bring in a vine to show you today, but I couldn't. So instead, I have brought a picture of a vine. It takes a strong, healthy vine to provide the nutrients to the branches that allow our beautiful, luscious grapes to grow. Unless you have grapes attached to the vine, they won't grow, and instead, they'll be wilted and dead and not able to eat. They wither away. Well, long ago, Jesus told a story to some of his friends, and he told them that he was like a vine, just like this. And Jesus said that he would provide the nutrients to his followers. His followers were like the branches. And as long as we stay connected to the vine, we also will grow healthy and strong in our faith in Jesus. Now, how do we stay connected to the vine? Well, we can stay connected by reading our Bible or praying or even going to church. And in that way, we stay connected and can grow healthy and strong in our faith, just as the grapes grow healthy and strong when they are connected to the vine. So let us pray. Dear Jesus, 
thank you for being our vine and for providing the nutrients that we need to grow healthy and strong in our faith. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I am the true vine, and my Father is the wine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides on the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and in them bear more fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch that withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified in this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Here ends the scripture reading for today's service. Amen. Genealogy has become a popular hobby for many people. There is a longing to know about our ancestors, to have a grounding in our family roots, to know from whence we come. Jesus was a genealogist of sorts. Instead of a family tree, he spoke of the spiritual vine to which we belong. God is the vine grower, the gardener. Jesus is the true vine, the main branch from which others spring. Jesus is the source of spiritual life for the rest of the plant. Off of that main vine are the branches of Jesus' friends and followers. Our purpose is to bear fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The metaphor of the vineyard is integral to the Christian community and has much to teach us about the Christian life of faith. Living among the vineyards of Sonoma County, you are undoubtedly familiar with many aspects of growing grapes. In today's passage, two verbs draw our attention, pruning and abiding. We've seen the Local vineyards prune back so that the vines appear lifeless. And yet in due season, they spring back to life with green tendrils. This winter, I cut back the plants in my yard. An employee from a landscape company happened to come by and remarked that I had cut the bushes back too far. I began to fear that I had killed the plants, but eventually they returned to life. In fact, they are full of more vibrancy than they have had in past years. The pruning enabled the plants to flourish in new ways. The word translated to prune literally means to cleanse to purge, to purify. The verb is typically used in the Greek language for ceremonial cleansing, not for pruning vines. But the word is chosen here because Jesus is talking about people rather than branches. There are times which call us to set aside a spiritual discipline that has become rote, producing lackluster fruit, and take up a new practice in order to stretch and grow in fresh dimensions. Pruning comes as we strip off our old ways of thinking and being 
that exclude and isolate. We make space for planting new attitudes that expand our horizons and enrich our lives. Circumstances can cause us to prune back an activity and devote our resources to new ventures. We are often surprised to find life greatly enhanced by change. Pruning may feel like a judgment, critique that what has been was wrong. There are indeed branches which have not grown healthy fruit and which need to be cut off. One such branch is the racial injustice that has smothered the lives of black Americans for centuries. The branch of economic inequality has sacrificed the poor for the glorification of wealth. The idolatry of individualism and personal preferences hinders the flourishing of other branches in God's vineyard. Some branches do need to be pruned and cut away. There are also times when perfectly good vines need to be cut in order to concentrate the vine's energy. The vine has only enough energy to nourish a few canes well. Pruning a vine involves making strategic choices. Harvard professor Michael Porter wrote, The essence of strategy is choosing what not to do. Vine growers know that there are seasons for cutting back old growth to allow new growth to emerge. Gardeners diligently weed their plots, purging them of weeds that rob the soil of nutrients and moisture necessary for the flourishing of desired plants. Just as individuals need pruning of activities, attitudes, and habits, so also do organizations, including the church. It is easy to drift away from a primary mission or purpose. Sometimes we have a touch of amnesia and we forget our calling to be connected to the vine of Christ and to bear fruit in the form of works of love. We get stuck in a rut, doing what we've always done because it's familiar and comfortable. But we don't always realize that it no longer serves the core purpose of bearing fruit that nourishes life abundant. An annual review of a mission statement guides us in evaluating what is true to our character and what excess baggage is not essential to our core purpose. Ministries and activities may have served a purpose at a particular time, but as time moves on, new occasions call for focused activity. At every church council meeting, leaders of this congregation recite the mission statement. We, the people of the First United Methodist Church of Santa Rosa, commit ourselves to the mission of growing, loving communities of faith centered on Jesus that express themselves through both personal spirituality and social responsibility, reaching up to God and reaching out to all people in God's love. Using images of today's scripture, a paraphrase of that mission statement would be to cultivate thriving vineyards anchored in the true vine of Jesus Christ, bearing fruit of the Holy Spirit in individual lives and in service and witness to the community. A key phrase is centered on Jesus. That's what makes a church distinctive from social organizations that serve the community. Our roots are deeply anchored in the soil of faith. We're not simply serving to do good or to feel good. We serve because we follow a remarkable person named Jesus of Nazareth 
who revealed the very essence of God, modeled a godly way of life and called people to remain connected to God through Christian community. In a vineyard, the best grapes are produced closest to the central vine. That's where the nutrients are most concentrated. That's why the lateral branches are not a, allowed to ramble all over the arbor. They are pruned and kept short. Christians seek to stay close to the true vine of Jesus. Our scripture calls it abiding in Christ. A favorite scripture of mine is John the Baptist speaking of Jesus, saying, he must increase, I must decrease. Abiding in Christ allows the character of Christ to influence us and to grow within us. We humans tend to take on some of the characteristics of those people with whom we spend the most time. As we make our home in Christ and allow Christ to make a home in us, we emulate the qualities of Jesus. Our preferences, opinions, and thoughts are shaped by our attachments to the true vine of Christ. The presence of Christ within increases, prompting us to bear good fruit in the form of works of love. Pruning and abiding in Christ go together. As we make our home in Christ, as our connection to the true vine is strengthened, we prune away those attitudes and behaviors which are not Christ-like. We bear a family resemblance to our spiritual ancestor, Jesus. We bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May we abide in Christ, savoring the rich flavor of the life of faith. And let us not be fearful to prune that which must decrease in order for Christ to increase. Let us pray. Holy Vine, we give you thanks for your sustaining life among us. We rejoice in the splendor of springtime with its reminders that you are forever working in the world, creating new life out of old. You guide us to prune that which is no longer useful or beneficial and direct our energies toward that which is life-giving. Help us to be honest in our self-examination that we might prune that which is unhealthy or even harmful to ourselves and to others. We long to abide more deeply in the presence of Christ that his qualities might increase in us. Our spirits are open to receive a fresh wind of your spirit that we might bear your holy fruit. May our lives yield a rich harvest, a blessing for those whom we know and love and for those way beyond our circles of concern. We give thanks for the community of faith which is like a trellis supporting us in our growth. We are grateful for those who pray for us, those who inquire about our well-being, and those who serve us. As we anticipate a joyous reunion, strengthen the bonds of faith and love which unite us in Christ Jesus. We pray, O oh God, for those who long for community, who feel lonely and even afraid. Offer them your companionship. Abide with all who grieve the losses of this past year, granting them hope for new beginnings. 
Strengthen those who are ill, restoring health of body, mind, and spirit. Journey with migrants seeking safe refuge in a foreign land and grow within us the hospitality of Christ. Be present with members of the LGBTQ community who feel rejected and grow within us the inclusive love of Jesus. Encourage those who are unsheltered, guiding them toward stability. May your spirit move in powerful ways in our congregation, offering guidance and opening hearts for the new pastors and families preparing to serve among us. Keep us centered on Jesus, connected to the true vine, that we might bear fruit worthy of Christ's name. Amen. sacrament of Holy Communion is one means whereby we receive anew the grace of Jesus Christ. We come to feast on the bread of life and to drink of the fruit of the vine that we might be nourished and reconnected to the true vine of Christ. Let us be in a spirit of prayer as we prepare for Holy Communion. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He came to offer new life, abundant life to all who hungered and thirsted to taste your love, your grace 
and your goodness. We remember how Jesus ate with sinners, healed the sick, taught all who longed for a new way of life. We remember that holy night in which Jesus ate with his disciples, took bread, blessed it, broke the bread, and gave it to his followers, saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he blessed it, and he gave it to his followers, saying, drink from this, all of you. This is a cup of everlasting forgiveness and grace. Drink this as often as you will in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this mighty sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, upon these gifts, upon the gifts in our homes scattered around this community and beyond, and upon your people gathered in their homes. We pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit would connect us through the airways and across space and time with one another and with you. Through this holy meal, reconnect us, O oh God, to the true vine of Jesus Christ, that he might live in us, that his character might be increased in us. We pray, lifting our voices in prayer with the disciples of Christ throughout the ages. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, receive the bread of life broken for you, the cup a blessing shed for you. We give thanks, O God, for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us. Attach us anew to your holy presence this day and every day that we might bear the fruit of love, of joy, of peace, patience, and kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It has been a joy to worship with you this day. We invite your participation in the full life and ministry of First United Methodist Church. You can find more about our ministries, our small groups, our service to the community, including Spirit Cafe on Tuesday evenings, on our website. On Monday, May 3rd at 7 o'clock, we will hold a Zoom church conference for two purposes. One is to consider the compensation package for the next associate pastor, Hung Ho Par Peter Park. The second item of business on the church conference agenda is considering consolidation from two church campuses to one campus. So we invite your participation. The, the Zoom link can be found in our What's Happening email and should be on the website as well. My friends in faith, as you go forth, may the true vine of Jesus Christ nurture your life as you seek to enable Christ's presence to increase in you. May you be granted courage to prune that which is necessary in order that God might grow abundant life within you and through you. May the Holy Spirit grow within you luscious fruit, 
that is rich for all to taste. Amen. Thank you.